Just a few days ago, I discovered a song by Dimash. I really felt it was exactly the right time that I needed to hear this song. And it was almost by chance. In a sense, it wasn't one of the ones that I was really expecting to be moved by. It wasn't a song that had come up a lot. You know, there are certain Dimash songs that are really famous and very showy and impressive and incredibly virtuosic. Omir Oter. It's in Kazakh language, which sounds sort of Arabic more than it sounds Russian. Would I be right by that? The themes are old age, death, and the meaning of life, nothing less than that. Youth that is um, fleeting and that passes us by in the blink of an eye. In the end, your fate is in the hands of the Almighty. It's absolutely brilliantly, beautifully written. Very haunting melody. It is a kind of Dimash song, but in a sense, it's less flashy than... I'm not saying he's flashy all the time. I know he's not. I like the st stage setting. I love where we are at the opening. It's it's sort of fragmented, like like life. It's... Oh. Oh. In a shirt with no bow tie. I'm just going to stop briefly. He, he has, I love that he's singing in his lower octave. These are low notes for him, A2. It's a beautiful part of the voice. He's a poet. He has this ability to take words and make them his own as though they are coming to him at that moment in time. Now, a great actor does that too. A great actor will go away, learn his lines and deliver them as though he has just found them at that moment in time. Oh. He might just be gone off. opening in A minor, shifting up to uh, D minor, but going up an octave, and then shifting up again to E minor, going up one more tone. Yeah, so he said the highest note was an E5, but, he, but he's still in this voice that I call his pharyngeal tenor voice. 
Um, it was making me think of a masterclass with uh, Juan Diego Flores teaching a young tenor uh, how to sing better the aria from Don Pasquale, Povero Ernesto. He says a few things that are quite, quite wonderful, but one of them is he says, don't sing it like an opera singer, sing it like a pop singer from Colombia. Y después te apoyas, te apoyas ahí abajo, mm -hmm. sin presionar hacia abajo, sin presionar a, a ningún lado, simplemente te apoyas y canta naturalmente. Piensa un poco menos que eres un cantante de ópera. ¿No? Sí. Piensa que eres un colombiano que está cantando la pollera colorada. Sí. <risa> libre, libre. And everybody laughs, but in fact, I think Dimash nails it because he's not operatic, but he's not not operatic. He's a pop singer, but he's not singing like a rock singer. He's in that happy place, that Goldilocks space, where he's not. <laughs> Look at Juan Diego telling this young tenor how to do it. And one of the things he says is, don't drag your voice up to the notes. Da, da, da. And Dimash never does that. Watch him sing, he sings on the note every time and his voice doesn't get tired for that reason. I call it that kind of slice that he does because it's back here and he, he goes, no. Nah. His start, he's always got a great start to the note, and that's bel canto training. He also has fantastic support, but he's not pushing. He's just got enough support here. Watch this young tenor singing the final part of the aria. Goes up to a D flat, which is, uh, yeah, that's a D flat five. Was it weird? This is Dimash territory, right? He sings it quite like a pop singer, but it's not a pop singer. He's in that happy zone. And he's got a cheeky character, and I think cheeky personality is essential to sing in this range. I don't know why, but I feel you've got to have a sort of quirkiness. <laughs> It's a fun part of your voice. It's a playing, playing part. Singers tend to think it sounds better when they go from below as if it's more work, more hard, as if they're achieving more, but it's actually just boring after a while. And let's go on with Dimash.
goodness. You know, so clever and moving and brilliant to finish with the Cobbits. And Dimash merely being just there, still transmitting that amazing energy that he has. But it's not all about him. He gives the end to the Cobbits. This song is about Kazakhstan. It's about 30 years of independence, how life is fleeting. And when he's old, he hopes that people will maybe remember some of what he did. It reminded me so much of my father, who was Dr. Michael Morris, and he died last February. I was in Thailand. It was right in the middle of the pandemic. And I had just spoken to him on the phone. He said, when are you coming back from London? Because he had this thing, he thought I was in London. So I just, just used to say, oh, um, very soon. I just have to get on a plane. And uh, the next day they said that he was rushed into hospital and he had emergency surgery and he didn't survive. They called me up and asked me if they should turn off, if they should let him go. He would never have any quality of life. Couldn't even get back to sit by his bedside couldn't get back for the funeral. It took me about a year for it to really sink in that he was dead. And, and my father absolutely loved this kind of music. In his flat where he lived, he was surrounded by Tibetan instruments and he used to play Greek Orthodox church music and John Tavern, Tibetan bells, and he would have just loved this. Um, sometimes it comes to me that, you know, I was never part of his passing. And Dimash, seeing it with such beauty and such honesty. I'm just so glad I discovered it. Uh, but this is certainly the one for me. Uh, really touched me. Uh, thank you very much. This is William here in Thailand, the Bangkok voice code, saying goodbye until next time.